All right, welcome everyone. Um, this video, we're going to just take a quick look at LNK or link files, as they've been something that have been you know abused by threat actors for some time. Um, also, starting to see them in OneNote docs. I have three samples here. I've given them names based off of what they were classified as on the malware bazaar, and we're just going to go through three of these just because I, I assume they would represent a good. A sample of how they're being abused. Um, I'll get hashes in the description, so if you want to grab these files and follow along, I certainly encourage you to do that. Um, to get started then, in no particular order, I'm going to grab the first LNK file, and as you can see, I'm on my Windows VM, and the reason I chose Windows today was just so that if you add the LNK extension, and that's not being, that's not showing up right now, so under the, the view options, we can say, uh, File name extensions, huh? So it must be that must be hidden by default. So uh, I gave these a .lnk extension, and that way, what Windows will do then is it'll interpret them as a link file as they are intended to be interpreted. Um, by default, there's no execution or activity. So much like uh, many of the attack vectors we see, they uh, you know it's it's completely dependent upon the the user to double click. However, with them being now .lnk files, we can right click and go to properties and under properties you'll see the target so this is what's going to happen when the user double clicks so i'm going to control a control c so select all that text and then copy it and move over to uh, <laughs> visual studio code we'll paste that in we'll turn on word wrap and analyze the script here so you can see that the lnk file will launch cmd.exe to execute powershell to invoke a web request to download this file from uh, bit.ly URL, bit.ly shortened URL, um, and, and, and essentially execute it. So execute that as a command. Uh, at the time of the recording, these LNK files are just, a, I don't know, they're, they're a week or so old. So unfortunately, this doesn't re resolve anymore, but we could probably continue to trace this down if we were to look for the URL in the URL house. Uh, that wasn't the point here. I don't want this video to get too long. I just wanted to focus on analyzing these LNK files. So we're going we're gonna to call the analysis for this one good at that point. Okay. Let's go back to... I'm going to skip ahead now because this last one is just slightly more interesting than these other two. Um, the final, or the third one in my list is QBot. So again, we'll just right-click, go to Properties. You can see there's our target. So let's control A, control C. We'll go back to Visual Studio Code. I'll just create a new window, paste it in. And what do we have? Um, basically the same thing, right? More, more PowerShell being invoked to download the payload from this host and writing it to the temp, the, the environment temp location as file.exe and then starting that file. So there's the kind of the, the the very simple pattern that we're seeing in order to, to to abuse this LNK file and execute this next stage payload. Okay, well, let's close that. I think that's good enough for that analysis. Um, and let's grab this last one. So we have Guildma. I'm not familiar with either of these two families. Uh, so I don't know if there's maybe some analysis that I'm missing. I just, again, I grabbed three three LNK files that were uploaded to the Malware Bazaar. I searched for file type. So if you search on the Malware Bazaar for file type LNK, that's, this is what came up. Okay, for the final link, um, LNK file, we can take a similar approach. We'll copy all the content here. Um, just again, using Visual Studio to help a little bit with uh, recognizing or, or looking at the code. Turn on Word Wrap. I gotta zoom things in here. And you'll notice that there is this, this you know long sequence of what, what appear to be encoded characters. And so if there isn't a command to decode those, it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't make sense that, that this could be something that is executable. Now, it is entirely possible that a, you know, a red team or a threat actor made a mistake, right? They sent out incomplete code or, or made some other error that causes this to actually be invalid. So you, you also may find that just by looking at the pattern that you might make some, you know, some uh, you may also be able to make a fairly educated guess as to what it is. Uh, possibly it's just simply base64 encoded. So you could, you could go to um, any tool like CyberChef and, and decode it and see what you get. Um, but anyways, I think sometimes it's helpful to not you know, have to worry about speculating. And we could just use something like Process Monitor. So I thought this was a good opportunity to just use Process Monitor to observe what's happening with these LNK files. So we'll start our capture. And we'll go to let me close that. We'll go to the folder that contains our LNK file and we'll double click it. 
Um, you'll see we get an error here, Windows script host, it could not find the resource specified. So that would indicate to me that it tried to download something and it failed to do so. And that's pr a pretty common pattern, especially at this stage when these are being used to gain initial access onto a system. And of course the patterns that we saw in the previous LNK files. So now inside of process monitor, we can go to the process tree and I'll make this just a little bit larger here. So it's a bit easier to see. Um, I bumped the font size up. So hopefully the important bits here um, down below, we have, uh, let's see here. There's, sorry, okay, so here, here is our execution from that LNK file. We have command.exe. You can see you know, the beginnings of that command, but we also have more, more text, more content. And then cert util is called to do decoding. So that would make sense that it's decoding. And then we have the execution of, of wscript.exe. So we can see that this certainly is a valid command and it worked as intended. Now, what happens is, uh, at least from what I can gather from this quick analysis, that simply the properties dialog here is just trimming the text. It's long enough that it's not showing the full text here. So even though it's valid, it's just we're not seeing all of it. Okay, so with the full execution now, we have the ability to just grab the command out of process monitor. Uh, so we could do a control A and, and copy that. Uh, this, of course, required us to execute that. And uh, that, that isn't always uh, necessary or, or a situation that maybe we have the ability to do. So we could do something like strings and run strings on that, uh, the LNK file. And, and here you can see we have now the full, the full command here as well. Uh, of course, with process monitor, we also have the rest of the execution. So we kind of know the rest of the story at this point. Um, however, uh, however, we could take a look at Let's just replace this text with the full command. Uh, I guess I didn't copy it, so let's try that again. There we go. And, uh, and now we can see exactly what's going on. In this case, um, we have a, a number of things that just are setting the stage to uh, essentially create this, this JavaScript file at this location in the file system. Um, some of these commands, and we won't go through all of them because you can look them up, they're all well documented. Um, but some of these commands are saying, you know, execute this as, as, as a command. Um, one of these, and now I forget, I think it's, it's slash V, is um, telling the environment to use this exclamation point as a variable expansion. So setting SDLX to this path, this JS file, that allows it to be used later on. And you can see now that this encoded blob of data is being echoed to that location to that path to that JS file, which then allows CertUtil to decode that content and then that content to be executed. So what we should be able to find if we go to the root of the file system, we have this file that's now decoded. And if we turn on some word wrap, oh, I guess we don't really need word wrap here. Um, you can see that it is uh, another command that is uh, defining a script HTTP to get this resource right here. And then that's going to be downloaded and executed. So you can see that this um, script is actually being defined to, to retrieve the script from this location and execute it. And, and that's why we got the error earlier because I, well, one, I don't have this VM connected to the internet. Two, I don't know if this script is still uh, live at this point in time. Um, but it would it would execute that as a script. It's just doing it externally. Okay, so that was intended as a quick look into three different types of LNK files, just so you have an understanding of how they're abused and how to analyze them. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, please feel free to leave those below. And uh, until the next video, I hope everyone is doing well. Talk to you then.